If you're thinking about starting an e-commerce business this year, it's important to have a plan in place to ensure that you are successful. Now, the world of e-commerce is constantly changing, so in this video, I'll walk you through the exact steps that I would take if I were to start an online store this year. So first off, you have to choose a business model. Now, if you're on YouTube or Facebook, you've probably seen ads for dropshipping or retail arbitrage or Amazon wholesale. And in the current landscape, I would not do any of these business models because it's short-term thinking. Sure, you might be able to make a couple bucks here and there, but it's not going to be a business with longevity. Now, I've been running my e-commerce store over at Bumblebee Linens for 15 years now, and it's still going strong because I own my own brand and my products. You have to think long-term. So for example, dropshipping has largely been decimated by Amazon. Now, back in the day, brands wanted dropshippers in order to increase their sales force without hiring. But today, Amazon owns over 50% of e-commerce, and it's super easy for any brand to list their products on Amazon and keep all the profit. After all, why give a 50% discount to an online retailer and handle shipping and fulfillment? We can just leave it all to Amazon. Now, when it comes to selling wholesale, you are selling other people's products, which means that there are many other vendors selling the exact same thing. And this always leads to price erosion. Now, the way to be successful in e-commerce today is to own your own brand and have full control. Now, this is why I would only consider doing private label today. Now, that's not to say that you can't start out dropshipping or selling wholesale, but that it should only be a stepping stone to private label. All right, so let's go through the steps now on what I would do. Step one is to find a product. Now, obviously you can't get started unless you have a product to sell. And the best way to do this is by looking at your own everyday problems and find products that solve them. By identifying a problem that you or people around you have and finding a product that solves that problem, you can be sure that there is a market for that product. So for example, we started selling handkerchiefs online because we couldn't find them anywhere. My friend started selling decorative pill holders because she wanted one. Now, I run a class of over 5,000 students, and the most successful students focus on products that leverage their specific skills or based on areas where they have knowledge. For example, Amanda Wittenborn makes millions selling custom-designed party supplies because that's what she's good at. My friend Rob sells an attachment for drone remotes because he's into drones. Now, if you're completely clueless about what to sell, you can leverage tools like Jungle Scout that can help you find products that have high demand but low competition. Tools like Jungle Scout will allow you to do market research on Amazon to find out how much money every listing makes and allow you to gauge the level of competition. You can also do research with tools like Ahrefs to see what people are searching for on Google or Terapeak to see what's selling on eBay. By the way, if you want more information on how to find profitable products to sell, sign up for my free six-day mini course below. All right, the next step is to find a supplier. Now the goal is to find a supplier who can provide you with the product you want at a price that allows you to make a profit. Now when it comes to private label, your goal is to be able to achieve at least a 66% gross margin on your sales. Now this means that if you sell something for nine bucks, you get to keep $6. Now there are a couple of different ways you can go about finding a supplier. One popular method is to use a website like Alibaba to search for manufacturers of the product that you want to sell. You can filter your search by location, price, and other parameters to find the best supplier for your needs. Another option is to attend trade shows or fairs that are related to your product. This can be a great way to meet manufacturers and suppliers in person, and it's also an opportunity to see their products up close. Now, before COVID, I actually used to go to the Canton Fair every other year. You can also consider hiring a sourcing agent who can help you find a supplier that meets your needs. They are experts in finding and vetting suppliers, and they can save you a lot of time and effort. Usually these sourcing agents cost around 5% of your cost of goods. Now, when you find a supplier that you're interested in working with, be sure to communicate your expectations and ask for samples. Make sure you're happy with the quality, check the minimum order quantity and the pricing of the product. Now, if you're happy with what you receive, you can then proceed to order a small batch of products to test the market and then move on to larger orders once you've validated that your product is in demand. Now, it's important to note when working with a supplier, Make sure you have a clear and written agreement about the terms of the deal, including delivery times, payment methods, and returns, and guarantees on quality. For example, when we order linens, we expect a defect ratio of less than 3%. It's also important to keep open communication with your supplier to ensure that everything runs smoothly. We have all of our vendors on WhatsApp and WeChat. Okay, the next step is to validate your product. Once you have some samples, your goal is to validate the demand for your product before making a large investment in inventory. You must try to sell them to gauge how well the product will sell. Now, there are a couple different ways that you can go about selling your samples. One way is to join Facebook groups that are related to your product and start promoting your product there. 
can also reach out to group admins to see if you can post your product in their group. For example, when we first started selling wedding handkerchiefs, I started posting in the wedding forums. I didn't try to sell anything. I would ask questions like, hey, I'm looking for a hanky where I can put my initials on it. Do you guys know where I can find such a thing? And then later I would say something like, hey, I finally found a place online, but I had to buy a bunch. If any of you want my extras, let me know. Another option is to list your product on eBay. This can be a great way to validate demand for your product as well as test different pricing strategies. You can also list your product on other online marketplaces like Amazon or Etsy. You can also use Jungle Scout to see how Amazon sales are for the product, do some competitive analysis, and check which brands are doing well in the market and how much they're selling your product for. Now it's important to note that in this step, you don't have to make a big investment yet. Just sell a couple of samples and test the waters. In this way, you can see if people are willing to pay for your product and you can also get feedback from your early adopters. And from this, you can make adjustments to your product and pricing before making a larger investment in inventory. All right, the next step is to list your product on Amazon. Now, one thing that I do differently from other e-commerce business owners is that I always test my products on Amazon first. Amazon owns over 50% of e-commerce and they have a large built-in audience of buyers. Now, it takes some work to launch a website, so the easiest way to generate sales quickly is to sell on Amazon. But remember, the end goal is to own your own branded website. If your stuff sells well on Amazon, then you should start working on your website immediately. Here's a brief list of steps to get started on Amazon. And by the way, I cover Amazon pretty extensively on this channel. Just do a search on my channel and I cover everything for free. Now, to list your product on Amazon, you'll need to set up an Amazon seller account. And then once you have an account, you can list your product by creating a listing on Amazon's marketplace. Make sure your listing follows Amazon's guidelines, is well optimized, and has great images and a description. Now, Amazon's pay-per-click advertising program can be a great way to generate sales for your product. And by running PPC ads, your product will be shown at the top of the search results for relevant keywords, increasing the chances that customers will see it. Now, to get the most out of your Amazon listing, you should make sure to follow all the best practices for Amazon optimization. This includes optimizing your product title, bullet points, and descriptions with relevant keywords, making sure you have high quality images of your product and pricing your product competitively. In fact, it's all in this video right here. Now by listing your product in Amazon, you can reach a large customer base and generate cash flow while you work on building your own website and brand. And keep in mind that selling at Amazon can be competitive and cutthroat. So my long-term strategy is to validate on Amazon and then focus on your own website. Use your Amazon earnings to fund your brand. Next step is to start your own website. Now, if your initial samples or small order sells out, you should then order a larger batch and start your own website. Now, the goal is to establish your own brand and control the entire customer experience by building a property that you own. Now, depending on your level of technical expertise, here are the shopping carts that I recommend. Now, if you're not tech savvy and you have the budget and you want the best supported platform, go with Shopify. Shopify is user-friendly and easy to use and allows you to set up your own online store quickly and easily. And Shopify has by far the best third-party ecosystem and you can find plugins that do almost anything. Now, if you're on a budget, you can use Shift for Shop or WooCommerce, which are both free to use. Now, the main downside is that they aren't as user-friendly as Shopify, but they are just as powerful. And then finally, you can also go with BigCommerce, which is shopify like but cheaper. Now, what I like about BigCommerce is that you don't get nickel and dimed with apps, most of the functionality you need comes right out of the box. Now, once you've chosen your platform, you can then start customizing your website by choosing a theme, adding pages and products, creating categories, and setting up payment and shipping options. You wanna make sure that you incorporate your value propositions and why you are different on your website and display them prominently on the top of the fold of your website right when people land on your site. This will help visitors understand why your brand is unique and why they should choose you and buy from you over your competitors. Now, the goal of having your own website is to establish your own brand, control the customer experience, and differentiate yourself from your competitors. You'll also be able to build a loyal customer base that you can market to over time through email marketing, SMS marketing, and other strategies. The next step is to implement email marketing. Now, the average conversion rate for an online store is only 2%, which means that 98% of your customers will visit and leave your site without buying anything. Now, the goal with email marketing is to retain customers and encourage repeat business by sending targeted automated email campaigns. Here are the four automated email flows that you should implement right off the bat. The first email campaign you should set up is for abandoned carts. These are triggered when a customer adds items to their cart but does not complete the purchase. And by sending them an email reminding them of the items in their cart and possibly including a special coupon, you can encourage them to return to your website and complete their purchase. Another campaign you could set up is a pre-purchase sequence. 
These are a series of automated emails that are sent to customers who have shown interest in your products but haven't bought yet. And the purpose of these emails is to build trust and educate the customer about your product and why they should buy it. Once a customer makes a purchase, you can set up a post-purchase campaign to thank them for their purchase and encourage them to leave a review or make a repeat purchase. Now for customers who have made a purchase but haven't bought in a while, you can set up a win-back campaign to re-engage them and encourage them to make a purchase. Now to get people to sign up for your email list in the first place, you must set up a lead magnet email sign-up form. You can offer free shipping or a discount code as an incentive for them to sign up. Now by implementing email marketing and automating these campaigns, you can effectively communicate with your customers and encourage repeat business on autopilot. Now the same philosophy is true with SMS or text message marketing. Like email, the goal of sending texts is to engage customers in real time and increase conversion rates by sending messages that customers get directly on their phones. By the way, I use Klaviyo for email and Postscript for SMS. Now let's shift gears now and talk about customer acquisition. I like to use a three-prong attack. Now the first prong is content. With content, the goal is to generate free organic traffic to your website by producing valuable and informative content that attracts your target audience. Now, one way to create content is through blogging, and by creating a blog on your website, you can share helpful tips, industry news, product reviews, or behind the scenes information about your business. You can also include calls to action within your blog post to encourage visitors to explore your website further. Our blog and search engine optimization generates about 25% of our sales for free. Another way to create content is through YouTube. By creating videos that are related to your product or industry, you can attract a large audience, establish your brand as an authority, and drive more traffic to your website. In fact, this YouTube channel that you're watching right now makes over $300,000 in just ads alone. Podcasting is another way to create content and reach a large audience. By creating audio content on a regular basis, you can establish yourself as a thought leader in your industry and attract a dedicated following. Now, the My Wife Quitter Job podcast is actually a top 25 show on all of Apple Podcasts in the marketing category. You should all check it out below. You can also create content for social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. By regularly posting engaging and informative content, you can attract a large following and drive more traffic to your website. Now, in order to make content work, you have to be consistent, and that requires that you put yourself on a content schedule. This could be one post or video per week or whatever schedule works best for your business. Now, by consistently creating valuable and informative content, you can attract a large and engaged audience establish your brand as an authority, and drive more traffic to your website. This will also help you attract customers who are likely to be interested in your products and will increase the chances of them converting into buyers. Now the next prong is paid advertising, and the goal is to generate immediate sales to reach your target audience on platforms like Amazon, Google, Facebook, and Instagram. Facebook ads are a powerful tool for reaching your target audience and driving sales, and by creating highly targeted ads that are relevant to your target audience, you can increase the chances that they will click through to your website and make a purchase. Google Ads is another powerful advertising platform that you can use to drive sales. Now, if your product has high search intent, you can create ads that are triggered by relevant keywords and appear at the top of the Google search results. Now, the exact methodology for running ads is beyond the scope of this video, but feel free to browse my channel for how-to videos on how to run ads. Anyway, by advertising on Facebook and Google, you can generate immediate sales and reach a large audience quickly. Now keep in mind though that these ads can be costly, so it's important to track your results, make adjustments as needed. Now the final step is to focus on your best customers. Most people focus all their efforts on getting new customers, but the bread and butter for any business is repeat business. After all, it's much easier to convert someone who has already bought. Now the goal with this step is to identify and nurture relationships with your best customers in order to drive more sales and increase customer loyalty. Now to identify your best customers, you can start by looking at metrics such as lifetime value, purchase frequency, and average order value. Customers who have a high lifetime value, purchase frequently, and have a high average order value are likely to be your best customers and should be your priority for your business. Now once you've identified your best customers, you can start building relationships with them by providing them with excellent customer service, special offers and discounts, or exclusive access to new products or services. Now, here's what we do. We give all of our best customers a phone call, offer them a special discount that can be used at any time, and a dedicated representative to handle the orders. Most of our big customers are wedding and event planners who buy in bulk from us. They represent a large part of our business, so we make them feel special. You can also create a special Facebook group where your best customers can make suggestions and give feedback on products. And this will help you to improve your products and services as well. And by focusing on your best customers, you can increase customer loyalty, drive more sales, 
and improve your overall customer experience. And by identifying the most valuable customers, you can allocate resources and energy on keeping them happy and engaged, and this will help to increase customer lifetime value and drive a lot more repeat purchases. Now, I've said a lot in this video, so let's put it all together. Once you find a product and a supplier, you want to first validate your product on platforms like eBay and Amazon to make sure that they're going to sell. Then you want to start working on your own e-commerce website as soon as possible. Implement automated email flows to retain your visitors and focus on your best customers. Now that you know the high-level methodology, watch this video now to figure out the best products to sell online.